party has presented its final address. A lot of persons are not aware and acquainted with what Labour Party and um, P2B has stated in their final address. As a matter of fact, we'll be unveiling all what transpired in their final address in this in this particular channel. It is very clear that P2B is almost at the verge of reclaiming his mandate because he has proven beyond that to the judges that he outrightly won that election. Labour Party started by presenting their final address and in their final address, they addressed and mentioned that they are not inviting anarchy because, you know, it was also alleged that in APC's final address, he stated that the Labour Party is uh, inviting anarchy by the ventilation of agitation of non-transmission of results electronically, stated by INEC. Labour Party response is that it was so cheap for APC to make that statement. It is misguided and destructive and a blackmail to the entire country as they we are only conversing based on the grants of the electoral act assigned as constitutional. In reply, Labour Party adopted their issues for determination dated and filed on the 18th May, day of May 2023 and urged the court to allow them argue the grants of this qualification of Bola Metinimbo and Kashim Shetima together. On the issue of qualification, Labour Party urged that they relied on the U.S. District Court decision, which ordered that the funds in the amount of 460,000 U.S. dollars held by First Heritage Bank in the name of Bola Metinimbo represented the proceedings of narcotics trafficking or were involved in the financial transaction in violation of U.S. laws. The above order was made by the U.S. District Court and was squealed to a settlement order. A lot of persons are not really acquainted with the word forfeiture. It is very clear, and Labour Party in their final address stated that the meaning of forfeiture it is the divestiture of property without compensation. It is like the loss of a right, privilege, or property because of a crime. Breach of obligation or neglect of duty. It allows that title in those assets and properties forfeited in instantiously transferred to another, such as the government. This is a very clear definition of forfeiture as explained by the Labour Party in their final address. It was very clear and stated as Labour Party went further in their final address to argue that one of the laws the court held was that was violated by Bola Metinimbo is also stated on the forfeiture. They went further to argue it, linking it up with the section 137 subsection 1D of the 1999 constitution that a person shall not be qualified for election to the office of a president if he is under a sentence or fine for another offense involving dishonesty or fraud. Labour Party mentioned that Bola Metinimbo and Kashim Shetima in their written addresses stated that the judgment of the United States District Court must be registered in Nigeria to be referred in this case. However, this was wrong as the judgment in issue is a money judgment. Labour Party also in reply to the argument of Bola Metinimbo as regards whether a civil forfeiture can be equated to a fine mentioned that is a case between Austin versus United States, the Supreme Court held a civil forfeiture in an in rem civil action is a fine. You see, Peter B and his legal team have often availed these final addresses and they are countering and stating reasons why the court should disqualify Bola Metinimbo with the proof comparing it with the constitution of the U.S. and comparing the 1999 constitution as amended. As regards the disqualification of Kashim Shetima's dual nomination, Labour Party mentioned in their argument that Kashim Shetima was not qualified to contest and hence his inability to contest disqualifies Bola Metinimbu. They relied on section 142 of the constitution which makes it mandatory that every presidential candidate must nominate a valid vice president candidate. They also went further, P2B's legal team went further to state that on the 14th of July 2022, when Kashim Shetima accepted nomination for the position of vice president, he was still in the records of the first correspondent, INEC, as the senatorial candidate of APC for Bonu Senatorial District.
they also relied on section 35 of the electoral act that says that where a candidate allows himself to be nominated in more than one constituency his nomination shall be voided these are facts that are documented constitutionally as stated in the 1999 constitution p2b and his legal team went further to portray and to prove to the court and not to confuse them in relying to the issue of non-compliance labor party argued that kashim shetima and bola metinimbu missed the point where they say that labor party did not specifically complain about issues like ballot board snatching insecurity etc but focus only on transmission to irf they went further to mention that they called witnesses such as PW4, a professor of mathematics who produced and tendered expert report of the data analysis, and P7, a cloud engineer ETC, who all came to give expert evidences before the court, and their evidences remains unchallenged. They mentioned that the implication of the section 60 subsection 5 is that the requirement of transmission or transfer of IRF is a must and was one to attract serious consequences to Bola Metzenimba and Kashim Shetima. ECP Tobi and his legal team have often made this survey and they have proven beyond doubt that all what they are saying are well backed up constitutionally. P Tobi and his legal team has tackled Peter Bola Metzenimba in their final address as they state further to argue that contrary to the argument of Bola Metinimbu and Kashi Shentima, the blood copies of the result downloaded from IREF cannot by any stretch of imagination be described as the authentic version of the actual form EC8A. They further argue that if it was the same, INEC would have issues when they then clean and clear their copies instead of certifying blank blood and unreadable images and that is what they used as a yardstick to report their final results. Still on the non-compliance, they mentioned that they provided substantial evidences establishing their case why Bola Metinima and Kashi Shetima did not rebuke any. You see, it is very clear to the blind and loud to the deaf that P2B Slega team have brought in a very equitable final address to the court. They went further also to make reference to the assurance given by the Independent National Electoral Commission with a live coverage about live transmission as collaborated by the evidences in a permanent form in PKK2. You see, the Independent National Electoral Commission before the election kicked off went and promised in a conference, promised all political parties and candidates that election fraud is minimized that they are going to transmit results electronically these are the proofs that was given to the court in the final addresses well it is now left for the five man panel of collect by justice Haruna to compare all the final addresses of INEC, apc and labor party and see the one that is equitable and so convincing react on the comment section advise the court on the appropriate modalities they need to carry out so that they can achieve an equitable judgment that is free fair and credible Share this video, like this video, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you get notified when I drop another trending video.